evening, everybody. It's really nice to be among you, Amy. Well, I mean, you always think of the people you love and know, and you, know, you can never imagine it as it is now with everybody here that's everybody means something, it's every person. We as we said we were really blessed, we've got a beautiful family. And uh, I've seen a I seen a, one of the scenes on the, on the from the TV thing that's uh, when you see my sister. Yeah. And I really just rather like, got my throat. And I really miss her. When, when we're living this life we've got in you, know, you're making a half decent effort, you usually get a half decent result. And I tell you my life when I knew that was a total, total nuisance. And the case of God have been managed to turn that all around and it's I mean I mean, heard the man saying this one right now. It stopped my mind for a long time. He says it's beautiful to be wanted and needed and loved. And that's what happened to us. Thank you very much, I think you Hello, <laughs> Uncle Bobby there. She, done, she arranged this whole thing, she decorated this place and all the, the struggles she went through in the last few weeks, she makes life a lot easier for all of us. We learned the secret. Just do as she tells you and we'll go on. <laughs> <laughs> I 
have the good fortune tonight to speak on behalf of my family, me and my brother Billy, my sister Shan, and my brother Robert. And I want to congratulate my mom and dad on 50 years married. It's just absolutely fantastic. Well done. Yeah. 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 For Richard and poor up sickness and health, and they've certainly been through the flying colours. We can remember we kids in the poor up days when my mom got a big tin of tomato soup and a pint of milk and put in a big pot and she'd heat up a tin of macaroni shells, fire it all in and we got a loaf and just all got stuck in and we all locked it. And then there was the days later on when they owned a few businesses. They were more affluent days. You came in, there was sirloin steaks for everybody and it was magic. We were all good days. And they've been through some scary health scares over the years and I think that this family just seemed to bring us all closer together and uh, when everybody was healthy, We've all been on holiday together. I was 23 years went to Turkey. And we managed it and we managed to all go to Spain twice. The last one was only 18 years, that's the smallest crowd so far. But when the coal marries in, I'm sure there'll be a few more. And, uh, and that, that was changed days. You know, uh, we used to go yearly trips to Butlins when we were kids, every summer. And my dad had a wee car, it was we called it a Dr. Finley car. I don't know the real name yet. But there was a programme Dr. Finley's case put me one of these old cars with the wind in the back. And the six years get squashed into this motor in all the cases. And all I know is by the time we got to Butlins, the state we were in, we needed a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> and they were great. I remember one year we, we ended up the happy families and we won the first prize. And I was honest to God, nobody spoke to each other for two years. <laughs> good pictures of that. <laughs> And uh, that was the days in Butlins when you could leave your kids in the chalet and then you could just leave them and nothing happened to them. <laughs> Change days now. And uh, the nurse would come down and, and she'd check up and do the chalet lines and they'd put a wee light on if you're at the bingo or something. There's a baby crying in C22. <laughs> and you can do it and my mom and dad would come running and do it to see what baby was crying. It was always with a robber. <laughs> My dad said to him, this is a neat stroke, Robert, you're 22 now. <laughs> uh, and they would try and get us to bed, to get so they could get out. My mum would teach you in one room, and my dad would take us in another room, and he used to tell us wee fairy stories and that. It was great, he used to tell us wee But he'd back a hypocrite at night. His favourite fairy tale to us was, this man says to this lady, will you marry me? She said no, and they lived happily ever after. <laughs> I'm 50 years now. But, uh, there was a great period in our lives when, when my mum and dad owned the shops. We get the chance to work with my mother and father and my aunties and my uncles and both sets of grandparents. And we got to know them one. It was brilliant. You know, and we had loads of laughs about all that. But I need to tell you a story about the chickens. Oh. <laughs> my mum and dad thought I could sell anything, especially my dad. <laughs> And this guy came in this Friday and I said, any bargains for it? And he says, look Jim, I've got these chickens. He says, we've only got two days to sell them. Give me them, how many is a 50? He says, I'll give you 25 quid for the lot. He says, you can't, can't get them. He says, well, you're going to have to throw them away. So we give them these 50 chickens. And every day he came in, 20 club please. Would you like a chicken to go in there? <laughs> <laughs> Daily record, the chicken money would be there. <laughs> Of these chickens, and it was Sunday afternoon, and they showed up next to the HR chapel, it was just a bit of shop. And there was one chicken left. And my mum said, What are you back in the bin? And my dad says, I'm, No, 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 this joke's up. This lady came in with a big flowery dress and a big floppy hat, just out of her mouth. She said, I'm looking for something for my family for the Sunday dinner. I'll be just a thing for you, madam. Chicken, do you like this chicken? And he had it in a big glass cabinet with the mirrors and the tomatoes and the lettuce. So he thought, he thought there were four or five chickens in it. He took this chicken out. She said, it's a bit small. I'll get you a bigger one in there. My mum took her out of the distractor. He's in the back and he's hitting it with a rolling pin. <laughs> with a bicycle pumped up its backside. <laughs> he's got this chicken bigger, he's stretched, he's pulled the legs. And he came out and he says to her, what about this one, my dear? She says, that's lovely. I'll just take the two of them. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> anyway, in a more serious note, and I'm not finished. Starting to enjoy myself. <laughs> we 
were we were blessed with two perks that just showed unwavered loyalty through the years. Uh, they'd always try and encourage us to be independent and they always gave us the opportunity to do things for ourselves. But they'd pick up the pieces and then went rang and in my case had a lot of pieces to pick up and they did. They'd still great values in it's all simple things like good manners and respect your elders, generally how you behave. They were just pointed out to us that these type of social skills would get us on in life and we're all doing alright. Well, thanks for that. Over the years, a lot of worrying times with health scare. I remember my ma, 15 years ago, she was in the Western and needed to do what was wrong with her and it was quite scary. And they couldn't find out what was going on. And see if you get into the Western and you go up to that emergency, if you look right, there's a car park above it, there's like a concrete balcony. And she was in there, and every day we would be up, Sham would make a packed lunch. And if you know your Sham, the packed lunch could have fed this room. <laughs> and we all sat out there together, and we all tell stories and laughed. And people wouldn't know there was anything wrong with it, seen this. And again, we were all together. It was fantastic, and thank God she came out that good. And he's all in my dad said, he's, he just got a hospital yesterday. I thought he was going to spoil the night for me. <laughs> Brussels, John Mack was along the corridor. I met Agnes in the lift, she was visiting Katie. How did he hear met each other in the lifts at Camden last week? I was going to ask the band just to go up there. And uh, he doesn't even worry about it, and he just gets on me, you know, and I'm not going to embarrass him by going through his medical history. But uh, it lasted me for three years, and I remember he got to the hospital in a wheelchair, and we all wondered if he'd ever walk again. And just over a year ago, Stuart and Moira got married, and they got to the first dance, and they two got up and followed them. And it was absolutely mad. It was a beautiful sight to see after everything they'd been through. Now, I'll just finish by telling you that I was at college at one time, and the teacher, the lecturer says to us, I want you to ask you all there's something that somebody said in your life that, that, that's significant and made a difference to you. And they were all quoting to you. Martin Luther King and somebody was saying, uh, Uncle Bobby got mentioned. He says, don't eat whites and don't eat us, no. He <laughs> got to me and, uh, and I said, I really don't know what to tell you. I said, the, the thing I remember in my life is when I, we were kids, my mum was making us all our breakfast, a big plate of toast on the table. And our belly came down and he licked on the toast and the plate back on the table. And then you guys would take it and brush out and ball and each other. He licked that and belly just ate in the rain. Every shirt and ball, and the dad's come up in the shift, he's come in the front door, the walking boots on, and he started screaming as well. He says, This life's hard enough without fighting your end. Because you see the people around this table, seeing your life and your backs are against the wall, that's the people that were there for you. And to this day, I found that you through in this family we're in. And I thank you for everything you've done for us and everything you've gave us. I just ask you to you raise your glass and let a toast. 50 years of Jim and Agnes. Thanks very much. I hope you enjoyed the rest of the night. And just before we go off, can I just ask all our grandkids if you come up and do what you want to do. And I'll leave you with them. And I hope you all have a great night. Yeah. <laughs> 